Yo, yo, yo. We are back from Vegas. We're ready to do preferred lines for the RBC Heritage. Got tons of master's takes. Got a great show lined up for you. I'm still awake. We're still moving. I've got enough energy to finish this show. I hope you bear with me. Here's preferred lines. Come on, Iron Form. They're going to go nuts when he hits this thing. <laughs> Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Idoni. At Tour Picks is the place you could find me on X, and you have stumbled upon the Preferred Lines Golf Podcast. We are streaming live right now on Twitter and on YouTube. I would prefer, though, if you would jump on over to the Preferred Lines YouTube page, give that a little subscribe, uh, hop in there, join the chat with us. We're going to do some master superlatives like high school yearbook style. So if you have any submissions, please drop them in the chat while we're going through some of the ones we want to cover. Uh, we're going to cover the RBC Heritage course preview, give some picks, talk a little masters, brought my boy Ian here to do it with me. Uh, let's get it going. Before I start, though, have to mention this show is proudly presented by the good people over at Rotoballer. Where's my little scroll here? Um, there we go. Uh, good people at Rotoballer. Promo code is LINES, L-I-N-E-S, um, as a little nod to this show, and that's going to get you 10% off any PGA premium sub for the remainder of the season. You're going to get access to my boy Ian's course preview. You're going to get my stuff. You're going to get Model Maniac, Spencer, Joe Nicely, the entire team full on access. You get in the Discord as well. Um, it is well worth it. I think it brings it down to like 6 or $7 a month. I, I'm not sure if the promo code MASTERS is working too, but feel free to use that. That'll get you 30% off. Plug that one in first. If it doesn't work, use lines. We'd love to have you over there. Join the team with us. Um, so quick note before we get started. I haven't slept since Saturday. Jumped on, went to, recorded a live show last night with Pat and Jeff from the Circa. We then went to dinner. I then went to the airport. Listen, this was the first time I tried the red eye thing. Not for me, okay? I, I thought maybe it would work out and I could just sleep on the way back. I couldn't, maybe got 20 minutes of sleep on the entire flight back. I'm so uncomfortable. I'm 6'4". It's hard to sit in airplane seats. It's a bunch of people that smell leaving Vegas. Uh, it was brutal. Got in, went straight into work. Now I'm here. We are powering through. I've drank enough energy drinks today to last me for the week, but we're ready to go. Thank you for joining us here on the show. Now, without further ado, I'm excited to talk to my guest tonight. Uh, it's been a long time coming. We've we had some things where I was supposed to go on his show. I got sick. Things didn't work out. Um, but here, welcoming in for his debut on Preferred Lines at Flag Hunting underscore Hunting on Twitter, Ian McNeil. What's up, brother? Man, you have uh, – I, I envy the energy, man. After not sleeping since Saturday, I was going to come on here and bitch and moan about getting like four hours of sleep last night. But, uh, man, you're putting me to shame here. I've got my energy drink, water, some sweet tea. So we're, uh, we're I think we're all kind of feeling the, the effects of the Masters hangover. But uh, three days until another elevated event and 20 million bucks up for grabs on the PGA Tour. It was a big week in Vegas for the boys. Um, UFC 300 was there as well. We got Pat. Pat Mayo is the best. He hooked it up with a little room. Derek, Steve, the guy who owns the Circa is like up in there lingering around. Jeff, Jeff, I got to talk real quickly. Quick Vegas story. Um, Jeff Feinberg had possibly the worst beat of any bet I've ever seen in my life. So did you watch UFC, Ian? I think I know where this is going. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. He had Max Holloway to win in five rounds like i don't know how the bet is called i'm not really into ufc but he basically just didn't need a knockout one second left incredible moment of uh, he was just he wasn't he took it pretty well but it was the ufc guys uh cody and paul that were there the do pat show were like that is as bad of a beat in the ufc as you will ever see um but my man took it on the chin he bounced back he hit some soccer corner kick parlays he was all over the place we had a great time um shout out to pat for for bringing me out there and and being a gracious, awesome host. Yeah, what when in Vegas, right? You gotta you gotta bet the uh, the yeah. 10 a.m. soccer games, and I'm an Arsenal fan, so su su Sunday did not get off to a very good start for for me after watching our our boys lose two 0 at home to to Villa. But 
yeah, vibes were yeah. high as, as I saw on Twitter all week long. I know Pat was uh, was cashing in on ten leg parlays uh, on Friday. Afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I mean that's I mean I, I, you're talking to a guy that literally got into the space because like listen to Pat and Jeff on Monday morning at, yeah. for you know years all throughout college. So uh, yeah, that that's like legit like a make a wish thing for <laughs> for someone like me, you know. Absolutely, man. It's awesome to have you on. Everyone who is checking out this show should go uh, check out the Flag Hunting Pod as well. You do a great job over there. Your course previews are as thorough as anyone that I know, uh, and I'm excited to have you on the show. You want to do some master's superlatives, like yearbook style? I kind of got this idea. What do you think? Absolutely, man. Let's let's let it rip. All right, let's start here. I'm gonna I'll tee you up first, and then I'll give mine. Um, the 2024 Masters Yearbook Superlatives. By the way, anyone in the chat, feel free to submit someone if you have an answer to this. But biggest, let's start here. Biggest loser of the week from the 2024 Masters is Roy McIlroy. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay, give me like I got like ten I want to get through. So let's let's do like a quick little one minute. Give me a rip. It'll give me a spicy a spicy ramen noodle quick hot take. Yeah, I'm I'm known for being a bit long winded. So like, don't feel bad for cutting me off. Uh, my toe is doing every single week. So biggest loser for me, Rory. I mean, we we talked all week long heading into the Masters about his press conference on discipline, right? Yeah, Butch Harmon's magic touch heading into the Masters. He's calling a shot in the media when he's listing off all the Masters champions. He goes twenty twenty four. Roy McIlroy, it's, you know, it's out of fever pitch in terms of the hype. You know, we're hoping that he could be the guy to topple Scotty. And not only is, is he completely irrelevant at Augusta again, but he gets dog walked by Scheffler the first two days. He loses by 10 over the first 36 holes. Um, and another year goes what goes by where he doesn't even sniff contention for the Grand Slam. Jo uh, Joe, do you know how long it's been since Roy McIlroy has started a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday at Augusta within five shots of the lead? Oh, God. Eight years, it's six. It's okay. since the since his Sunday duel with duel with Patrick Reed, uh, where he, he was way back when he surged in the second, way back. Correct. Correct. So he has not entered a round two, three, or four within five shots of the lead in six years. And next year we arrive in twenty twenty five. He'll be nearly thirty six years old. I think Rory's going to age gracefully. You know, he's pretty injury free. Got a you know smooth flowing swing, balance game. But you know, it's been a while since he's he's given the fans anything to to kind of hang on to at, at Augusta. So just another point for Rory T24 means nothing. Absolutely. And this nothing, year. nothing. Rory's a good one. Um, I thought about Rom, who was my big pick for the week. Yeah. I also wanted to honorable mention nominate biggest loser of the week to the idiot who knocked the protein bar out of my boy Ludwig's okay. hands after he goes birdie birdie. And That's then he points. subsequently hits it right in the water. My man just needed a little protein in his system. Keep your hands to yourself patrons um should have kicked that guy out on the spot but <laughs> biggest loser of the week uh victor hovland Vic, Vic is broken i'm i'm sad i was reading right before we came on hot here that he's now involved and been name is tossed into live rumors i think it's been there before but um i've never seen a guy who was number two or three in the world and win the tour championship seven months later be so self-deprecating about his game heading into the week basically saying he has no chance yeah. Coming out and shooting a 32 on the opening nine, something yeah. happened on 10 where I don't, I still don't understand why he took an unplayable. I, I, I even went back and looked at the app before we went hot here to see where that ball landed up. Um, it must have been bad, but just a complete implosion. He had the moment that is so cringeworthy where he tried to brush in the putt and missed it. Now he's withdrawn from the RBC. The man is totally broken down to the studs right now i hate to see it but i can't think of anyone else who was a uh, bigger mm -hmm. loser than bigger loser on the week than victor so what do you what do you think victor goes off at the pga um yeah it's interesting because i think that's an awesome course fit for him yeah, yeah i don't if we don't see him until then it could get to 55 yeah. Um, I think like I, I took a 45 late at Circa. They had it up there when I got in. Jeff yeah. actually bet it for me. I'm like, this is high. I don't care what he says. It can't be that bad. And I'm right. feeling real good about it after that opening nine when he hit every single green in regulation. Um, yeah. It wasn't meant to be. All right, next one. Uh, superlative Masters 2024. Class clown. Who do you got? <laughs> I got Xander, but only because it's just like, it's so predictable. Like, I mean, we, we all like came into last week. He was the most tipped on all the charts, de facto second best player in the world after Scotty, uh, you know, playing some of his best golf 
from a statistical standpoint and like what does he do like he just he does exactly what every detractor said he would do right like he comes in finishes inside the top 10 without ever sniffing contention even even like because he started at 200 par on on sunday made birdie on two and yeah. you know scotty and colin start off slow right scotty missed his yeah. first two greens including the par five fifth colin missed a couple of make little birdie putts and we're like okay here's a chance for some of these two unders one unders maybe to, to vault themselves within three two shots of the lead and what does Xander do? He makes his first bogey in 29 holes, back to back, mind you, and settles back into T9 where he remained for the rest of the day. So it's just, I think a lot of the Xander hype last week was due to like sheer desperation. Like we we're just trying to find somebody that could, could just, could hang with Scotty. And we saw it obviously at the players over four days. And, but man, it, yeah. it <laughs> but like Xander's just the same guy he's, he's always been. And I, I feel dumb about I feel you on Xander. I feel you on Xander. If you were there for the bet, it had to be even more painful because he kind of just lingered. I've got Xander later in this in a minute here. But class clown of the week, clown show of the masters um, has to be Zach Johnson. I mean, oh. did anyone make a bigger fool out of themselves than ZJ? Um, yes. This guy is the absolute worst. I'm embarrassed that he was the captain of our Ryder Cup team. I hope he's never a vice captain again. I hope they don't let him back at Augusta National for cursing out the fans. I'll go overboard on any take you want to go to on Zach Johnson. Kick him off the tour, Doug. Like, we don't need this guy here anymore. We don't need uh, – he did it at the Waste Management. Now he's doing it at Augusta National. Um Keep your mouth shut. Play shitty golf to the point where you're no longer going to be invited to these events except the Masters. You'll get the defending champion, blah, blah, blah. But um, I'm just so over Zach Johnson and his – and then he lied about it. It's it's just a, such a bad look. You're a clown, ZJ. Get out. Get out. What does what he, he do? Like, I feel like ZJ was one of the more popular like captain's picks of the last – like. 10, 15 years. Like he throughout his career, he kind of always seemed like a like a stand-up guy and a guy that, you know, could maybe rally you like a very stricker s type of character. And like in the last six months, he's done nothing but just completely yeah. undo 20 years of good faith that golf fans have put into him. Like I I was a fan yep. of Zach Johnson. I feel like it's downhill. Up. It's downhill yeah. and somebody cut the brakes. All right. Next one. Uh 2024 Masters <laughs> Superlatives. Biggest flirt. So the person or the player who teased you the most, I'll go first on this one, Ian, because I'm going to take Xander, who you just talked about. Okay. Um, such a tease <laughs> all week long, the way that he scrambled and the way that, you know, he didn't, he basically, he he didn't go over par on the opening day or, the, or day two, under par day three. If it wasn't for a birdie on his 72nd hole, he wouldn't have played a single round under par. Yet, never really in it, right? Never made that run. He doesn't have, I want to see the next gear, and it just doesn't seem to be there. Like, he'll get first, second, third, but can't put it into fourth gear when he really needs to. Um, he has every tool. The shot that he hit on 18 the one day to scramble out of there, like, he can yeah. pull off things that nobody else can pull off. There's really no weakness in his game except that, doesn't have the next gear biggest tease of the week xander shawfley for me who do you got yeah to, to build on the xander thing i mean how like as a xander ticket holder i woke up sunday morning like this is perfect like yeah. we just got to go out there and how many times has xander fired a stress-free 65 and just coasted into fifth place all we need is scott to stick in neutral some of these guys mm -hmm. to go down the leaderboard and all of a sudden xander's at minus nine in the clubhouse and we're like we're smoking a joke and it's the same yeah. Ricky and those, and the thing is if he got to minus nine those guys see that at that right. point, and they've got to play 12. They've got to play 15. They've got to play 13. They've got to play 11, and he's in. He's yeah. in. So, like, he could have really applied some pressure. I It wouldn't have mattered with Scotty, right? No, but no, you no. never know. Um, I just wanted him to make that run. Uh, Byron, like, Cam Smith was was right there for me on this, on this one for Biggest Flirt. He couldn't make a putt. And it felt like he just teased us all week long because he actually was sticking iron shots. Cam Smith, and this probably isn't even a hot take, but give me right now, pencil it in. Cam Smith will win a Masters. Like he's yeah. going to put on a green jacket. He has the around the green game that you look of every. The Masters rewards special 
talent and guys who have magic beans and can scramble like none other. When you have Bubba Watson, when you have Phil Mickelson, when you have Jordan Spieth, these are guys with multiple jackets. When you have Patrick Reed, when you have even – Scotty is the Scotty. top yeah. three around the green player in the world at chipping. Yeah. Cam Smith will win a green jacket. Yeah, I had I had him at sixty six to one, which I thought was an absurd number. Yeah, um, and yeah, we we got all the ball striking we wanted to. It was just uh, you know waiting on that twenty twenty two spike performance on the greens. My biggest flirt called Morikawa. I mean, he's my favorite player on tour, so maybe I was just really really eager to buy the narrative of you know a two time major winner giving once again giving the fu to region form cashing a forty to one plus ticket you know for the third leg of his Grand Slam and. Honestly, man, through through eight holes, I mean, I didn't really have after Zana made bogey bogey. I was like, I'm pretty much done. I'm just rooting for for fan interest at this point. I wanted him or Max to win, and uh, really didn't put a foot wrong through eight holes. I thought he was unlucky, really, to not be maybe in the lead at that point in the round. And then, of all things, the driver puts him on the tree on nine, short sizes himself in the bunker, gets too cute. As Colin is kind of prone to do when he has a has kind of an awkward bunker shot, yeah. and uh, all of a sudden, you know, thirty minutes later, we're we're out of the Masters. Yeah. So. Um, he I, even honestly, said it like he talked post round. He's like, I got greedy on like nine and ten, and like it's, it's just Scotty doesn't get greedy. He doesn't do yeah. that. He hits his shots and he shapes it to the safe part where he knows, like, if I overhook it or if I overcut it, like he just doesn't make mental errors like almost all of those guys made coming down the stretch, which was one singular mental error. And he doesn't do it. And it's part of like Ted Scott talk before Sunday. He was like, I, I don't know what the question was, but he was like, I think Scotty's superpower is this. Like, yeah. it's hard to pinpoint one thing, but his superpower is he can make mistakes. He washes everything clean and he does not ever compound them. And it goes both ways because Colin knows that and yeah. Ludwig knows that and Max knows that. And so they know like, Scotty's not going backwards. You know, Scotty, yeah. like Scotty's lead was what seven under par. Like, you got to get to seven. Like, there's no collapse in Scotty Scheffler. Like, I, right. I know the putter can get cold. I know he's, you know, anyone can make a bogey around Augusta, but over the course of 72 holes, like it's just very rare to see that nine hole stress that takes Scotty out of the tournament. Even when he goes bogey bogey, you know, he just he comes back, he's steadfast, you know, he'll stick an iron to a foot or he'll make like a long bomb or chip in. Like it's just yeah, he, he forces these guys' hands, and and Colin, after missing, you know, premium birdie chance after premium birdie chance, watching Scotty get up and down when he's not playing his best, and I think the one time Colin just needed to be a bit sensible, it you know, again his aggression got the best of him, and he he kind of had to press because he was like, man, I, I got to do something special to beat this guy. Yeah, and it was interesting. So Jeff, Pat, and I did a recap show, and we talked at length, and you can go watch that over on Mayo Media Net about like. Where do you put Scotty right now? Where do you rank him all time? And and you can debate it. And you know he's about to have a kid, so this can all like that's a that is something like yeah. that that could very much be a little bit of a hurdle for him to jump over. Um, I don't know totally where I stand on it right now, but one of the most telling things, Ian, is is listen to how other players talk about him. There's no doubt that he is not an intimidating figure, but they are intimidated by his game. Like listen to what Wyndham and Xander talked about at the players championship. When we were there coming down the stretch, how they're paying close attention when Scotty's coming. He's listen to what like Rory is enamored with this guy right now. Yeah. Scotty Shetler. like listen to Max Homa's comments and even Colin Morikawa post round. I found it very interesting that, um, his word selection and maybe I'm taking this a bit out of context, but he was like, you know, I, I'm trying, I, I don't know the exact verbiage, but he said something along the lines is like, I know that I have to close the gap in between me and Scotty. And I don't think he was talking about distance. I think he's talking about these players recognize that he has a gap between them. And there's not often that you're going to hear a two time major champion that young talk about a gap between him and the other guy in the final pairing with him. It's not often that you're going to hear these players just gush over someone that they're playing with and they're intimidated by his game. And they really believe there is a gap. I sent out a joking tweet. There was something with Tom or yeah, Tom Kim, like paying him out. And I'm like, do these guys ask for strokes against him? Cause they legit, like they know that he's better than them at right. everything. And they know his one kryptonite is a seven foot putt. 
but it doesn't matter. They understand that there is a gap between him and the next best player, and we can kind of see it. I don't know how big that is, but the players get it, and these are top players in the world understand that they may be second, and it's not particularly close. I was I was going to bring this up in a later time, but because we're on the Scotty thing, I mean, obviously, like the the all time conversation will have to wait for a few years. Of course, mm-hmm. he's only got two majors. Like he's still twenty seven. There's still so much that can happen. Um, but I think what there should be conversations about is perhaps the best season ever. We're talking about we're nine events into the season. He's won three times, three elevated events in a major. Uh, mind you, four in a row. That could have been four in yeah. a row without that miss putt in Houston. Four fin- four top sixes in addition to the three wins. No finish worse than seventeenth. He's now gained strokes putting in his last four starts since switching to the mallet. And I mean, like, where's his competition? Look across both tours. Like, if Scotty brings his best, he's winning any event in the on the planet by four. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I mean, again, I'll circle back to it. He he had his second worst approach week of his season and won the Masters by four. Mm-hmm. He gained only three point one on approach, which is like below his twenty round baseline. Right. So he. He underperformed with his iron play and won the matches by four. There was uh, at one point, I'm not sure which hole it was. It may have been when they were playing eight where there was a four way tie and it wasn't a four way tie with just anyone. It was Homa. It was Ludwig charging. It was Colin Morikawa and it was Scotty and he beat third place by a touchdown. He won by seven. Like he understood that when he took the lead like i kind of i know you do like some nascar stuff like it reminded me of like when a guy gets in first and he's like some people i feel like will will take that lead and move by a car and they're kind of got their eyes on the rear view like who's back there who's making a move like he gets up there and it's pedal to the floor it's gas down and it's come and fucking catch me i don't care what you're doing behind me because i'm about to go on a freaking birdie run here and it's it's impressive to see man it's awesome yeah, he's um he's something I haven't I haven't seen. And I've you know, I I've watched, you know, I've I've been involved with you know golf betting for you know almost six, seven, eight years now. You know, I've seen Jason Day go on his run through 2016, 2017, DJ Roy, they've all had great runs, Kepka, great runs, but mm-hmm. you know, it's like every week you have to come up with reasons why this guy is gonna finish yeah. fourth instead of first. <laughs> Cause those are the two options. Yep. All right, Mulligan Moment, the award for Mulligan Moment. So basically the one shot that a player could want back. I'll go first. I have Max Homa on 12. The reason I'm saying that is I – okay. So Ludwig and Colin had the things on 11 where they went in the water. Yeah, That was just a really poor shot by both of them. I kind of think Homa got a bad break on 12. Like he hit the green and it just like – almost felt like it hit a sprinkler head the way it jumped off the green and into that bush and ejected him out of the tournament. Was it a miss hit? Yes. Was it, did he maybe miss by five feet and get absolutely screwed in that situation? I also think, yes, Um, that was a rough moment for Max Homa and I would like to see him get that shot back. What about you? Yeah. Like as much as, as much as I'm like, I, I did say Ludwig on 11, but yeah, after Colin ejected, like I, I only ever thought Max was going to catch him. Like I, mm-hmm. I really was never in full belief. I, even after Ludwig made the birdie on nine, you know, I, I was never really in like, oh, Ludwig could win the Masters. I, I thought Max could could win the Masters. With the way he was putting, uh, you know, it was just like anything inside eight feet all week felt like it was just right in the dead center. And, you know, he hadn't made a bogey in God knows how many holes uh, on the weekend, right? So you just felt like if Max could just sustain this and not make any mistakes, you could just maybe allow Scotty – a bit of rope just to hang himself on a really treacherous back nine. And, and you're right. Like Max, Max got hosed on 12 and um, took a lot of the drama, out of, especially after, after Ludwig hit his second 11. But, uh, but all right, yeah. a few more here. Uh, Master superlatives life of the party. Who do you got? <laughs> I mean, is there only, there's one answer here, right? It's Bryson. <laughs> it's Bryson. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. Has to be. I love Bryson, man. I miss him so much. There's so much going on from picking up the post to 
I, I imagine like in my head, like him with like some um like work goggles on, like chiseling these irons when he's got them on like one of those little blades that spin around. Um, he's playing his own clubs he manufactured. I kind of didn't like this when I first saw it. I was like, this feels sketchy to me. Like, I feel like if he were to win, I do feel like other players may have called him out on it and been like, whoa. So these are like AI created to like help your off center hits. But then I saw some stuff like players have always done this. Like players going back have like made their own golf clubs. So he's so rooted in like the history of the game. I actually think it's cool that he did this. Yeah. Um, he's so entertaining. He's so electric. He had the round of the week opening day. Um, I just want Bryson around in majors. It's it's just fun, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, if anything, it was the putting that that really did him in. I mean, he was uh, he was ball striking the hell of it. In the chipping, time. like the the couple of uphill chips, and people are gonna rip him because he has the longer clubs. But there was one on fifteen, and and I forget the other hole where um, uphill lie trying to chip, and he just like chunked it. Like it, it 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 that was a tough scene for him. Yeah, it was on three, wasn't it? I think it yeah, was on Sunday on too. Three, yeah, yes. I now. Um, but yeah, he dismantles holes. Did you see what he did on eight? Like he hit it. Like there's that bunker that are catching players. He hit it like 60 yards past it. Um, he can absolutely do incredible things. I really like his attitude now. Like it feels like he is finally, um, comfortable with who he is. Like it felt all the other versions of Bryson, whether it was, um, like the Byron Nelson hat or, you know what I'm talking about? Or beef, like it all felt forced. It felt like he's finally like just who he is and he's comfortable with himself. And um, it's fun to watch him golf, man. That, that was that was my best moment was seeing Bryson kind of come into his own and, and really be like very jovial with the media and, and not really take himself too seriously. It really felt like, again, he, he just seems really at peace with the decision he made. There's not really a hint of any regret there. And he even admitted to to learning a lesson in humility, you know, through his past trials and tribulations at Augusta. Right. And I, yeah. You know, he's 30 years old now. He's, I think he's matured. And um, I mean, he's like just talking about purely golf. Like he's driving the ball as well as anybody on the planet right now. You know, there was a time yeah. where I think the fact that he could really get sideways around Augusta really hurt him despite his immense length. He's really tightened that up. He's one of the straighter drivers, especially for how long he hits it. Uh, yeah. Finished above field average and driving accuracy in each of his last three events. So um, yeah, I've got a 66. Like he'll try anything. He's there to make his own playbook for yeah. every place he goes. Um, he'll try to hit it in places. He'll be in spots. You've never seen anyone else. There was two, like, I don't know that I've ever seen TIO, like a movable object relief at Augusta. It just, the way that their course is set up, you just yeah. don't really get in those areas. Like, of course, Bryson finds it on like multiple holes where they're moving. He's got officials follow. Like it's, it's just, uh, he's just fun. He's fun. I I will say, what do you, what's your opinion on TIO on three left of three? Um, I don't, I don't love it. I know that there was a sketchy situation that I heard about with Scotty, right? Second time in three years. himself, man. Second time in three years. It happened in 21 as well. Or 20 finds himself often. I do feel like in, in these sketchy situations a bit there and yeah. then there was the one on the one on two where he got an extreme break by getting he didn't pull it off but he got to move yeah. his ball to like a perfect angle because he's in the walkway and then he's behind and there's like a seven-year-old boy that's like telling him he's fine like you didn't touch oh, it yeah, yeah he didn't touch it yeah <laughs> um yeah so it, it's yeah. interesting all right let's keep it moving um what do we want to do next all right let's do best moments best moments yeah. of the masters for you your favorite singular moment Again, like I, I just kind of alluded to it. I, I think Bryson's just weak as a whole. I think was my was my like I think honestly, you you take Bryson out of this equation, it's a pretty dull Masters. I know Scotty like deserves to be crowned. He deserves to be the best player in the world, but uh, there was really not a lot of Sunday drama. There really wasn't like a signature shot for me, maybe like nine or or ten for Scotty. But um, but I feel like I was already kind of uh, done with that at that point. For me, it was just it was Bryson number one carrying the. Uh, the signage posts. And then again, just like just a th- new invigorated Bryson who feels like, you know, he's, he's kind of figured this place out. No one's going to be, you know, looking to call him dead money at Augusta in the future anymore. And, you know, for, for those of y'all that maybe have some investment in Valhalla in a, in a month or so, yeah. uh, he's very live for that. So that, that's it. fine. 
it's a good bet if you've if you're already in there because I I want a piece. I'm sure there are a lot of people that will want a piece in Valhalla. Um, so this was hard for me. I'm kind of between two. I think the best. So the one that I had was um, I thought it was pretty cool of Scotty when he walked off 18 to, to sort of call Ted and let him walk in front. Sure. I, there's so many like endearing things about Scotty. And yeah. the religious stuff aside, because I know people either love or hate that, um, he's so down to earth. He's so real. Yeah. And I don't know why it is that I really can't fully get behind, like cheering for his greatness, because there are other guys in the past that I've done it for. And maybe that he's so likable. Like there's there's people that didn't like Tiger. There's people that didn't like Brooks. There's people that didn't like Jordan, like every great player. Like there's, there's tons of people that love him, but there's also people, there's also haters, right? It's right. hard to really have that with Scotty. Um, that, I thought that was a really cool moment though, to sort of give Ted a shine. Ted's fourth caddying jacket, which is pretty awesome. But you know, I don't really get suckered into these moments too much, but when I saw the pictures, like the, the Tiger and Vern thing, um, oh yeah, that's, that that's was that was a pretty cool moment, and I love Vern Lundquist. Um, he's incredible to see Tiger walk over there. He obviously knew what he was doing, um, and just those pictures. I feel like I'm gonna remember. Like if someone could show you that picture of yeah. a hand sticking out behind a tree, Ian, in 20 years, and you'll be like, "That was Vern Lundquist." Like we will remember that, even though you don't see his face, you just literally see his arm. Um, we'll remember that moment. So. Yeah. Biggest winner. We did biggest loser earlier. Let's wrap it up. Um, I'll let you go first. Biggest winner of the 2024 Masters. There's an obvious one, but do you have anything other than Scotty? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna go with Scotty. I'll I'll go with Ludwig. Let's give Ludwig a shout out here, right? Yes. First major start, a venue where no debutante has won in 45 years. You know, all of us were saying, you know, maybe he's better at short courses. And then 24 years old, out of Texas Tech, finishes third in total ball striking, first in strokes gained putting. Clears the group in third by three shots. I mean, he just proved everything right. You know, all of his doubters right, and all of his uh, all of his fans right. Are I'm sorry, got that in reverse, but you guys know what I mean. This kid is an absolute stud. He's you know he's gained like 30 shots of ball striking in his last three starts between Sawgrass, Augusta, and Valero. Uh, has a legitimate claim now. I think he's the top five player on the planet. And I mean, if you if you just want to go, I know Feinberg was. Uh, he was a big Ludwig guy over the weekend, yeah. and he I think he released a tweet that was like, "I'm just gonna." He had 100 to one. He had yeah. 100 to one. Sick ticket. Yeah. Sick ticket. But uh, it's, it's Ludwig for me too, and it's not particularly close. I mean, obviously Scotty, but um, the kid made himself a bazillion dollars. Um, there were people walking around like in the sports book, like who, like he's so he's just got it all, man. He's got the smile. He's got the charm. He looks like a freaking model out there. He's got the distance. He doesn't miss shots. Um, he seems to be so cool and casual that even after the moment on 11, like to just kind of shake that off, I thought yeah. was really cool. You know, everything's in front of him. Ludwig can sell me anything. Like it's, it, he, it's all Adidas, but like his sponsorship, who's ever his agent phone has to be ringing off the hook today for someone to get on that collar. I joked that Ludwig could do a cringeworthy selfie video, trying to sling me a DraftKings promo code. And I make a new account just to give Ludwig his props. Like he could sell me anything right now and I'm yeah. buying it using promo code a Berg. Um, he was awesome so cool to see him he's going to be around for a very long time and he's a problem if you could give me 18 to 1 on him in majors for the next five years so, like sign me up right now i'll sign that ticket uh is, it's, it's it's awesome the thing is joe like 18 to 1 not just the, like anywhere give me give me 18 to 1 ludwig like actually anywhere right because yep. we all he all came out of college with this amazing driving pedigree we all we all saw the potential at places like tory pines or quail hollow Augusta, whatever he may be, whatever it may be, but you know, runner up finishes at Pebble Beach, right? He won his he won his title at RSM. He won his uh, European title at the Omega Masters, a sixty eight hundred yard golf course in Crons. So it's just like there's no golf course on the planet where he he walk he comes onto and, and there's no chance of winning, you know. And I, yeah, of course, man. He's twenty four years old. He's young. He's skilled. He's fearless. Course proof. What more yeah. could you want out of a blue chip talent? So he'll be yep. a he'll be a worthy contender for a long time. Donnie had a good one there. Let's do, you know what? Let's do one more. Most likely to succeed, because this is always one in the superlatives. Um, Donnie had a good one there with Nikolai Hojgaard. I think Ludwig's yeah. obvious, but still to me, 
most likely to succeed at Augusta National, who hasn't yet, um, is still Will Zalatoris. Like a T9 finish, he's so solid. A sixth place, a second place in his three Masters, besides the one where he withdrew. Um, he was third in strokes gained, T to green. He was 49th in putting this week. He's going to figure that place out. He's going to win multiple majors, and he's going at some point to put on a green jacket. Um, he's too good. This was the worst form he's shown up in in any of those Masters, and still a relatively easy T9, minus three on Sunday. Um, will Zalatoris will succeed at the Masters. Who do you got? Yeah, you start to put together, you know, we all do it, right? Like for each generation, we all kind of pick out the players that we're we're kind of riding or dying for. They're going to win a green jacket at some point. Zalatoris clearly fits that mold. I would throw his, his uh, Wake Forest boy, Cam Young, in that mold. Yep. And honestly, I'm going to throw Colin Morikawa in that that mix as well. I, I mean, like it. You, you you talk about a guy that had absolutely no recent form. I mean, I'm a I'm an I'm a Colin Morikawa stand through and through, and even I had no interest at 40, 50 to one, whatever number he got into last week. And he comes out and just major championship under the radar and has his best approach week since I think winning the uh, the Zozo uh, last year. And he, there's something to this like short game splits with Colin Morikawa and Augusta. He's never lost strokes around the greens of Augusta National in, in four starts. Never lost strokes putting in four starts around Augusta. So clearly there's something there with the yes. honor of the green play. And when you carry his ball striking ceiling, I mean, it's it's easy to kind of paint the picture that he's going to be with in. multiple players there. The around the green and the putting. Sometimes they just figure it out. OK, those are your master superlatives. Thank you for participating in that exercise with me, Ian. Let's get to a little course preview. Harbor Town Golf Links on tap this week. One of my favorite courses on tour. Always brings the drama. Great for chasers. I think um, if you look at six of the last 10 years, someone has come from three back or more on Sunday to win this event. Obviously, a shorter golf course. We know that 7,200 yards. You wrote an amazing course preview up today that really dives into the stats on it. Um, a lot of approach shots from 175 ish range um, because of the narrow fairways and what happens is they're so tree lined and dog legs that really what players end up doing is they end up hitting into the same landing areas which turns a par four into a par three and they hit 180 yard shots from the same spot and it's who can hit these tiny greens which are the second tiniest on tour they also have those runoffs and who can get to 15 feet? I like like opportunities gained this week as a stat. I think course history is sticky here. It's a little bit player dependent, but for some guys, they really have this place figured out. Yeah. You have to be comfortable shaping shots both ways. I want some player who is a shot maker. And one of the, okay, here's the interesting one that I have in that I wasn't anticipating to see. When you look at the last three winners, Matt Fitzpatrick, Jordan Spieth, Stuart Sink. Yeah. My gut would have told me had I not looked at the stats, oh, they're all amazing putters. They crushed it with the flat stick and around the green that week. Not necessarily the case. Fitzpatrick was third in tee to green. Spieth was first in he tee to green putting. on that week. Lost strokes putting. And Stuart Sink was first in tee to green that week. Yeah. It's kind of a very sneaky spot where I think a lot of people will – devalue off the tee this week and just think it's going to be a putting contest when really the stats on a short term sort of looking at us you know honing in the microscope the last three years at least it has really been a really strong tee to green test chasers are live um, tournament always brings drama those are kind of some of my basic notes about harbor town i love this place you got anything to add there pal yeah, I mean, I I think I I think it's well stated with kind of the uh, the weighing you're putting on course history. I'll go maybe a step further than that. I'll say that comp course history. I think we see a lot of these, you know, like there's genres on the PGA Tour, right? There's your big boy championship level golf courses, your Torrey Pines, Bay Hill, Mirror Hill Village, etc. And then there's also a collection of, you know, you if you you know you write course previews every week like I do. How many times yeah. do you use the words short, Bermuda grass, par seventy, positional? Yeah. Right, like Sea Island, Waters, yeah, yeah, Wedge, uh, Wiley, Innisbrook, PJ National, right, uh, Mayakoba back when it was a, back when it was a thing, right. So I think you can definitely take a lot of um, correlation, not just from past heritage leaderboards, but we've seen a lot of crossover success between a lot of those events. Uh, River yeah. Highlands is another one uh, that features a lot of crossovers. Pete Dye Design, short golf course, moderate rough mm -hmm. penalty. Um, 
And so, yeah, I, I would I would look not only again at course history, but some comp course stuff. And particularly when you talk about driving, because this is just such a different driving test than you're typically used to on the PJ Tour, where length is everything, and especially right. on a week like last week of the Masters, where everyone's most weight driving stat was usually carry distance or some some auxiliary stat of that. Um, right. and I think if you can narrow down, not necessarily you know fairways gained or good drive gained, which are you know I think important stats this week. But guys that have routinely shown an acumen on these positional driving tests, because again, you have to be smart, you have to be disciplined, play the quarter of the dog leg, and take kind of the 160, 70 yard approach that Pete and I kind of gave you 50 years ago. So, um, yeah, off the T splits at, at RBC Heritage, off the T splits at River Highlands, Sedgefield, Wiley, et cetera. I think those kind of uh, those kind of stats go a long way this week. Yeah, I, I think I like Innisbrook as my favorite comp. They're both coastal courses but you don't really feel that when you're on them they're both like a few miles from the coast but they're very tree lined they talk about innisbrook feeling very much like a carolina course um the other thing that i noticed is like right at the the you know those other courses wiley and pga national a little bit players have started to really deploy driver a lot more at those courses wiley players are cutting it over the dog legs pga national doesn't really while the fairways are narrow the further you go down, they don't really pinch in further. What happens at this course, and I noticed it at Innisbrook too, the fairways are already narrow. At 250 yards, which is a common landing area here where most players hit it, it's around 30 yards wide. That's narrow. But at 300 yards, it's 21 yards wide. So you really can't hit driver. And that's the same way at Innisbrook. Those are the two narrowest courses on tour at the 300-yard mark. So while players have the old narrative, I think, was they're all positional tracks, players have started to sort of break that mold. Really good players who are hit it long and hit it straight like Ludwig and these guys. I don't really think it's that advantageous at a course like this. You can catch a limb. It's all about position. And sometimes um, you'd rather be in the rough than the fairway here because it's all about angles to a lot of these pin locations. And you can be in the fairway and be blocked out by some of those limbs. So um, it's a very interesting test. They cut the rough down this year, which is one of the things I saw in the GCSAA report, um, down to two and a half this year. So the rough will be a little less penal, I anticipate, than recent years. Uh, but that's what we got on the course. You want to get some bets? Let's do it, man. Betting board, RBC Heritage. Guess who's the man up top? Scotty Scheffler, uh, four to one. Xander at eleven to one. To me, it feels a little bit, Ian, like they've cut the numbers on some of these guys behind Scotty because they understand there seems to like, I feel like they think a withdrawal could be coming. So yeah. they slashed him a couple points because they don't want to get absolutely burned and hang big numbers on the rest of the field. Um, I don't know if he'll show up or not, but he's four to one Xander 11 Ludwig 14 Rory 14 can't lay 16 Morikawa 20 Fleetwood 20. I'll stop there. Um, your favorite player in that range. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to hide from the fact that I did have Patrick Cantley as my cover guy uh, heading into Monday morning. I post the article at 8 a.m. It's kind of the perils of of this kind of content that yeah. can really age out pretty fast. When I post the article, he's 25 to 1, down to 16 in spots now, which I'm not particularly interested in paying uh, purely based on course history and a couple of holeouts at Augusta. So for me, at, at, at current market price, I mean, it's hard not to just lean into Ludwig. Uh, 14 to 1 seems like a pretty fair number. Um, for a guy that, you know, had one of those best ball striking weeks of his career at uh, TBC Sawgrass. We already talked about his acumen on shorter courses, be it Pebble Beach, Sedgefield, uh, Sea Island in recent history. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's, you know, he's 24. He's still looking for that kind of marquee win. He's obviously contended a few times, but I think he'll still, he'll be up for it. He, uh, you know, I don't yeah, see him um, next this week. I missed the Cantlay. I would have loved it. Um, missed it this morning in travels. But I, I don't have anyone right now. Yeah. And this is kind of going against what I said earlier about this guy, but I might end up on Xander, man. Me and Pat and Jeff were talking like if Scotty were to withdraw last night, who's the favorite? Is it Rory? Is it Ludwig? Is it Cantlay? And I'm like, it's it's definitely Xander. And those have shown. Yeah. Um, eighth, fifth, second, his last couple of starts. He's doing everything so well. And it just feels like it's coming. And I think picked up a lot from him at the players. And I think it's a lot of credit to Chris Como that he's working with where 
you would think the monkey on his back right now after not winning in two years would be a heavy burden to bear, but he seems very at peace with himself. Um, I don't think the mentals are going to hurt him. The physical form is fantastic. He was fourth here last year. Even if you don't, even if Scotty does show and maybe is lacking a little bit of focus or preparation that could open the door for a potential player, um, one that is hungry and needs a win right now is Xander Shoffley, and he's playing the best, second best in the field besides maybe you could put Ludwig there. The thing about Ludwig that I actually don't like him this week, um, that was the biggest week of his life. Right. And it's really hard to back that up a few days later and to soak it in. He seems like he's the type of guy that can do it, but I would say that a few years ago, um, Will Zalatoris finished second at the Masters kind of out of nowhere during what was essentially his rookie year. And he came here to a course where he was familiar with growing up sort of in the area and playing college in the area and finished 44th. Um, and he talked after how it was just a lot to go through that experience, finishing second in your very first or second in your first masters, finishing second and then coming out and playing top players a few days later, that was hard for him to manage. I imagine that um, it could maybe be a negative for Ludwig this week. I'm, I'm kind of drawn to Xander, but I haven't made the pool yet. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't argue with it. I mean, we talked about the importance of a lot of kind of the short middle iron play uh, nearly 50% of approach shots come from that 150 to 200 range. And over the last 12 months, the only player, um, better than Xander Shoffley from that range of strokes gain wise is, is Scotty Scheffler. So, yeah. uh, Xander, of course, I mean, he's, he just, he's almost like, I mean, like the projection with Xander is just like Scotty, but a little bit like pushed down the number line a little bit where like, mm -hmm. you kind of know it's going to be like 11th at worst at this point, um, yeah. Xander, but, uh, yeah, I, I personally haven't bet Ludwig and I honestly, I missed the 25s on Cantley too. I was, uh, also recovering a little bit. So this morning yeah. trying to play some catch up. So. I haven't made a bet on our 20 to one yet, um, but I could be convinced, especially considering I feel like if there ever was a venue where like you can make the case that Scotty's more likely to finish T six than, than at the top, then it, it would be right here at Harbor town where you're not going to be hitting 14 drivers around, right? It's some of the easiest green complexes to get the ball up and down around. And I understand the iron play is great, but um, I think two of his biggest advantages with his driver and his short game are a little bit mitigated around Harbor town. Yeah. Um, so in this next range, my boy Byron said this is also not a Willie Z course. It's easy to disagree with someone not in your live show, so I'm going to. I've got both Demon Deacons, and my thing is is it's T to green play. I think they're two of the best guys T to green in the entire field. Uh, if if that's going to showcase itself in recent winners as being the number one predictive stat over the last couple of years, um, Cameron Young and Will Zalatoris do that just as good about as anybody. Both, I think, are hungry again. Um, two players who I think will be just – it's going to turn into a long iron, like 180 to 190-yard shots over and over. And I want those two guys. So I took a 30 on, I believe, Willie. Yeah, 30 on Willie, 28 on Cam Young. Demon Deacons for me. Who you got? You got anyone after like the 30 to 50 range? I, I don't. I Honestly, I, I've started my betting card only with three names, and it, they start at 75 to 1. So I'm still kind of looking for some direction here. Uh, oh. I will kind of back your Zal Torres move. Under 30 to 1, he's probably the most likely guy at 28 that I would be pointing to. Uh, we've seen a lot of like correlation between the week before and – you know, performances this week at Harbor Town, particularly with the Irons. You talked about Fitzpatrick, uh, came off his best approach week of the year at the Masters, then, win, then won the RBC Heritage the uh, the very next start. Uh, Stuart Sink was showing a lot of form leading in with the Irons. Webb Simpson, same thing. Um, and Zalatoris was fourth on approach last week at the Masters, also rates out fifth. Uh, strokes yeah. came per shot over his last 12 months in that key range, 150 to 200. So a lot of things for me point to Willie. Uh, here we go. Obviously finished third here uh, a couple years ago, so I – Definitely trust him on and second at the Valspar, Cam Young, who yeah. we just I just said that was my favorite comp course a few weeks ago. Um yeah. Cam Young, I, I like him better than Willie, but I just I feel like it's coming for Zalatoris. And yeah. if I'm going to tee to green in this range, I still think he's he's one of the best. Um Joanne says Wyndham Clark top 10 elevated event. I mean, is there any argument to that narrative? Like it, it's it's hard to 
it's hard. I mean, I, I have nothing against it. I just, there's nothing I can say. Like to take Wyndham Clark at the same price as Will Zalatoris or Cameron Young makes all the sense in the world because those are two guys who haven't won in forever, and you're going against a prolific winner and a guy who shows up. Yeah, a guy that is not afraid of the moment. We talk about, you know, if, if Scotty is that boogeyman once again and he's in the final group, like Wyndham is one of the few guys I kind of trust to, to stare him down in the outright market and maybe get it done. Uh, obviously won at Pebble Beach earlier this year, so he is, he's adept at short courses. I, I still do prefer Wyndham when he can, like, utilize his biggest assets. He, he is kind of similar to Scotty in the fact that I like Wyndham on courses. You have to hit driver a lot, and that short game is a real, real, I think, barometer. Um, yeah. And this week, Could he I, be I, injured. Who win him? I mean, he was talked about the injury at Houston. He finished thirty first. Wow. He missed the cut at Augusta. Um, I'm looking at the course history here. Is not great either. He's played it the last five years, and his best finish is a twenty ninth. Um, I don't know. It, it was it, he didn't play well at Augusta, and he didn't play well in Houston. Um, yeah. And he talked about a bat. Wasn't it back? Yeah, it was a back injury in the gym, but he was he yeah. was still moving at like 190 ball speed in Houston. Oh, so he crushes it, dude. And, <laughs> and would, people don't give him enough credit for that. Like, I watched the range at the players, and I don't think people talk. I think he's the longest player on tour. When he goes after it, I think he can hit it further than Rory or Ludwig. I mean, you got your cam champs in there, but, but he's not accurate enough. Like, Wyndham hits it so far, and they had the little thing on the driving range where they're posting, like, players numbers from the range all week you know yeah. what i mean because they've got the shot tracker on every player who's hitting shots and ball speed club head speed longest drive of the week all three of those things at the players championship from the range was wyndham clark yeah and that that um that length like it helps him in a lot of her ways because we saw it at the players championship where you did get some of those more difficult holes where hitting the fair was paramount like on 18 he would just take two iron, two eighty down the middle, and have like seven iron in, you know. So a lot of these, it's like the Bryson corollary. How Bryson was such a good long iron player when he was on tour because of his length. He just hit nine iron when everyone else is hitting seven. I think, I mean, Wyndham has proven that you know he shouldn't be doubted anywhere on tour. Yeah, how about long shots? Um, C May three one 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 says Keegan Bradley. Yes, I got Keegan. Yeah. I got a hundred to one on Keegan. Let's see what he's at. That's yeah, right. hundred to ones. Still out there, still available. I think it's a good course fit for him. And the other one I took at 75, where is he? Okay, looks like 66 is the best number is Cam Davis. Great week last week. I usually love Cam Davis on short courses with small greens. Maybe that can be statistically proven wrong, but that's just what it kind of lingers in my head when these courses pop up. It's like play Cam Davis. Good showing last week. Does he have any decent course history oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah jesus christ 25th 7th 3rd i didn't even know that when i made the bet he's third in strokes gain total per round here um second in par five birdie or better rates i'm looking at my model now um cam davis i'm in on him and keegan those are my two long shots who do you got yeah you, you're kind of taking the words out of my mouth with cam davis he's a guy that's you know we talk about like core layer courses and driving on these shorter positional golf courses colonial innisbrook harbor town whatever and he's one of those guys that always climbs my my driving ranks whenever we filter out for you know courses under seventy two hundred yards. So I bet Cam Davis at like every short Sony you know Amex uh, Harbor Town golf course in on the tour in the last like three years. So um, yeah, won't hate that one bit. Why why not Denny here? Why not Denny? I'm he's, gonna. It's a FOMO bet. I'm gonna yeah. take Denny. 100%. 60 to 1. I mean, I feel like, you know, Valero is obviously a little more penal than Harbor Town if you do miss the fairway, but very similar ethos in both those two golf courses and really just kind of yeah, thinking your way around it, really avoiding trouble, just playing playing the proper shot off the tee. And then, I mean, dude, the approach rate was so dialed in uh, over four days at Valero. And, you know, you're looking for and an dude, extra on the greens. There was a time at Augusta National when he was two under and things went like on Saturday and things went really bad. Um, I love him. He's my guy, of course. Um, made friends with his parents at the players. They were joking about how they check out the pod. So shout out McCarthy oh, family yeah. if you're in here. They were like, you got more. At they were like, we don't ever when he was on your show. He was like, he never talks to us. But he you like got I learned more about him on your show than I do on the calls with him. Um, but cool. Full disclosure, I was trying to get him on before the master's week yeah. um, to talk a little bit about his first experience at Augusta. And then that happened at Valero. And I'm like, 
maybe it's not the best time to ask you the next day to come on a podcast. So we'll save that for some other time. Um, Gutted for him. But yeah, he'll be a FOMO on the card for sure. How about uh, how about Step Straka? Uh, I'm currently seeing him. Don't locus. have him, but what are your what are your thoughts on him? Seventy five to one came third here a couple years back, and another guy that when you filter out for for kind of these elite approach players from kind of one fifty two hundred, Straka right sixth behind Scheffler, Hovland, uh, Xander, Zal Torres, and Glover from one fifty to wow. two hundred yards and strokes game per shot. Also finished top ten last week on approach to the Masters, Bermuda grass, big time field. Positional golf course. Straka doesn't get enough credit for how accurately he drives the golf ball, um, and I feel like this is a nice spot for him to maybe pick off one. You know, came so close at the at uh, Southwind a couple years back. Um, has won at Honda. Has won at uh, yeah. Sorry, not he didn't win, but he came second at Sanderson Farm. So these Bermuda tracks, these kind of more difficult Bermuda tracks, I like Seth there. Um, and then, I mean, I, I bet Shane Lowry, but again, I posted it this morning at seventy five to one. It's down to forty five, so that's got hit Raider. pretty hard. And then I, I bet Lucas Glover as well, who, again, I'm, you know, you, you talk about tee to green play. You talk about reliability off the tee. Really, really stellar with the iron play as of recently. Um, yeah. You know, I, I got him at 121. I think you can still find triple digits out there. Um, but, yeah, Glover, of course, we know about the ball striking. It's metronomic. But sneakily, one of the kind of short game stats, stats I am looking at is sand saves. Um, a lot of the past champions here are very, uh, inside the top 12 in sand saves. 80% of the top five finishers have rated above, above field average. The bunkers are kind of the only spot around the greens at Harbor Town that actually provide a lot of peril. And uh, Glover, 11th in the field in sand saves in 2024, fourth in greenside bunker proximity. So he's a sneaky good bunker player. And you get him on a golf course that really, again, takes a lot, drive out a lot of these longer guys' hands, a lot of approach shots from the same area. I think Glover can kind of um, – can – establish his class there so it's been a lot of long shots for me which is not my typical strategy at these kind of elevated events but um but yeah that's kind of the direction i'm going and i might pick off a couple guys under 30 by by week's end but uh, love it dude um i'll have my long shots video out on the roto baller youtube page tomorrow i'm gonna take three guys i probably already spoiled the beans but go ahead and check that out tomorrow um i will have those up ian it was an honor and a pleasure you were awesome on the show tell everyone who's checking this out on youtube or listening to the audio where they can find a little bit more of your content i appreciate it joe yeah it's been uh it's been good finally getting to talk to you you know i'm uh now i'm a kind of a Adopted Snowbird. I've just moved down to South Florida a couple months ago, so uh, we got to hit up a golf course at some point. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's been good being on. I'm I'm obviously at Flag Underscore Hunting. We do a podcast every week, both golf and NASCAR. So kind of dip our toes in both of the sports. My uh, co-host Chris is our NASCAR analyst. I cover the golf uh, tomorrow. Big show for me personally is I've been a Spencer Aguiar fan for. Again, as, as long as I've listened to Pat and Jeff, and he'll be coming on for the Heritage next uh, tomorrow. So we'll have Joe on, of course, um, as soon as possible. And um, yeah, you can find me at Flag underscore Hunting. Obviously, a couple articles every week on Roto Waller, and make sure to go follow me and you know, obviously all the incredible writers you guys already know about between Joe Spencer, Joe Nicely, Byron. I mean, it's an all star cast. Uh, Matt Miller over there, who's a who's a big friend, who's yeah. a big man, uh, who does great work on Live. He's he's been killing it over there recently. So. Um, but yeah, man, Joe, good, good having me on and, uh, do this again. Yeah. Too. Great to have you on, man. Have a great night. I appreciate you. Thanks yeah, for changing up the time on me too. And being flexible. It's been, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to just eat and go to bed for like 12 hours. So thanks buddy for sticking with me. Yes, sir. Take it easy, man. Talk soon. All right, guys, quick final thoughts before I get out of here. Thank you all for uh, supporting a lot of the Masters content it really means a lot to me. Um, your guys, there were a couple of you that I met. So it is crazy to me. There were uh, there's probably four or five, maybe six people throughout the week who came up to me there and introduced themselves. And I appreciate that. It's humbling. It's weird in a sense because like, you know, when someone comes up to you and you're like, they know a lot about you, right? They follow you, but you don't know them. So it's, it's an instantly like an awkward 20 seconds but they were extremely cool thank you for coming up and saying what's up it really means a lot to me those guys who are out there in vegas uh, i appreciate it thank you final thoughts um it was a great experience out there and one thing that i i really came to respect pat mayo for is this guy and i talked a little bit about earlier takes care of his team so if you have a team if you have whether it's a family, whether it's a business, if there's a team in which you are the leader, take care of those around you. Um, Pat talked about sort of negotiating with Circa on his deal there. And his biggest thing was like, 
I need to bring my guys. I want you to take care of my producer. I want you to take care of my UFC guys. I'm bringing this guy from Florida. I'm bringing Jeff Feinberg. We, I need to make sure all these guys are taken care of. He took us to dinner every night. He bought bottles of wine. Like he was super awesome to hang with and he supports other people's stuff. Like there are some people on Twitter who you won't catch them liking a single person outside of their company's posts. I obviously don't work for Mayo Media Net. I obviously am at potentially like a competitor in the content space. And he was super cool to me. Always support stuff. You see him out there constantly bringing other people onto his platform to lift them up. Be one of those people. Be like Pat Mayo. If you've got a team, if you've got employees, make sure that they are as well taken care of as you when you go to attend these events and they will stick by you. Those guys are fiercely loyal to him. There's a reason why Paul, there's a reason why Cody, there's a reason why Jeff, there's a reason why these guys have been there for years and had a million opportunities and not gone elsewhere. Take care of your team. Uh, take care of yourself. I appreciate you guys for checking out Preferred Lines. My name is Joe Idoni. I hope you have a great week at the RBC Heritage. Best of luck. I'll catch you soon. I'm going to go get some sleep. I'm going to go get something to eat. Um, talk to you guys later. Thanks for hanging with me. Peace. Mm -hmm.